Because it's getting a bit awkward. So. Yeah. I care about how others treat others. So that's the first lesson. Does everyone understand that? Would you like to talk about the Lebanon, Lebanon issue? The debate, you know, the debate of Palestinian issue. Mary's, oh, Mary's been very, very focused on the Palestinian issue. She lived in Lebanon for like nearly three years. And I, I lived in a Palestinian refugee. In a Palestinian so refugee. She has a hands on affinity, affinity so. with this, right? Yeah. And, and she may feel a little angry when she's going through this, so we just let that happen. But um, how does that relate to this issue? I care about how others treat others. So I, um, I felt that. Uh, for a long time in my life that I really care about how others treat others and I um, often got angry living in Australia because I felt like nobody cares about what's happening with other people in the world um, or even in the next suburb and, um, and so I went off to be a volunteer and I, I really loved that experience and I grew a lot personally through it and um, I really uh, connected with this issue of injustice that I saw all around me, in my work, where I lived, everything. And, uh, do you want to talk about this? And so when I met AJ, I, um, I had a big thing about boycotting Israeli goods. Because I felt that that was a loving thing that I could do. I didn't believe in violence. But that was a way of showing my support for people who didn't have any civil rights, uh, the right to vote, the right, I would talk about the refugees, and, um, and actually many Palestinians, um, a right to, to have themselves heard on, on the world stage. And I recognised that is, the Israeli interest was supported by a lot of Western interests and a lot of anti-Western sentiment. And I was, I never went to McDonald's, I never drank Coke, but I was like, very, um, I had decided boycott was my way. Um, and uh, we had an interesting uh, altercation in a supermarket once in the UK where he wanted to buy rosemary from Israel. <laughs> she wouldn't let me buy rosemary from Israel. <laughs> rosemary said, wasn't a girl, by the way. <laughs> 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 a lot of emotions, <laughs> not necessarily about the rosemary, yeah. but, uh, but we, we got to talking about what is actually loving in that situation, because I felt I had found a loving solution to my concern about, not the solution, but a, a loving way I could demonstrate my care about how others treat others. And um, I was quite resistant to hearing that that wasn't necessarily the case. But AJ pointed out that I was actually being quite selective and almost punishing of a certain group of people. Um, so if love is impartial, I would love everyone the same. And I said to him, but I'm, I'm not angry at like Jewish people. I'm not angry at Israel. I'm angry at the system that's in place and I want to change the system. And he said, yeah, no. <laughs> well, first of all, she was angry with the group in Israel. And it's because of her first century emotions. Right. And then secondly, um, changing the system doesn't get the system doesn't get changed by you adding fear to it or you adding anger to it. And that is what I was doing. So he said something that I had believed to be true for a lot of my life, um, but I had given up on. Um, during my time actually living in Lebanon, and that was if I change my soul condition, then that is the most powerful thing I can do for this planet. And I had passionately believed that for a lot of my life. But when I lived amongst people who I saw had, had so much injury and so much damage and were so downtrodden, I had given, so I had to deal with a lot of disillusionment with, with love and disillusionment with the world emotions. And that was actually a part of my soul condition that was preventing me from being loving. So that's the divine love way of doing it, rather than my natural love of which is boy So that's interesting because Kelly is the second person today who's told me that they're really triggered about AJ wearing a Nike t-shirt. <laughs> and I would have been once too. <laughs> but I guess 
I feel pretty uh, confident that I think self conditions help me a fair amount of people on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't even notice anymore. Well, for a start, I bought it before I knew about all those kind of things. I don't believe in wasting it. But um, again, the more energy you focus on boycotting, um, changing things through protest, and all of these other things, you're actually giving more to these unloving events, really. You're making them bigger than they are. Because remember, in reality, they're all a reflection of your own soul condition. So the real question we need to ask ourselves on the divine life path with this issue of loving others, others loving others, we can be so judgmental about it. We can say, yeah, see, they were unloving to that person. But what about all the times I've been unloving? Right, with my soul condition, holding on to my soul condition. And I'm not even thinking about that at that moment. So what we need to do is put the focus back on ourselves, right? What inside of me creates the Palestinian Israel system of things? There's emotions inside of you right now that create that. Ask yourself, what are those emotions? Some of you have an emotion of um, prejudicism between one or the other of those two parties. Some of you may have been harmed by an Israeli in your life, and so you have a more of a preference towards Palestinians. Some of you may have been harmed by something in the Arabic system of things, and so then you are feeling more anger towards that. Or many of you are easily influenced by the world's um, media system, which is all driven by some very, very powerful and wealthy men who have the ability to control you through that system. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so you've got to start questioning, all right, do I look at the unloving way that the media presents everything? What inside of me causes me to want to believe that rather than the truth? What emotion in me causes me to do that? If you deal with that emotion in you, you will be one less person who wants this lie. Does that make sense? Yes. And in fact, as you grow in love, you become so powerful with that that hundreds or even thousands or even millions of people around you will start to look at you as a person who's now understanding the truth and they will start trying to accept that truth. How do you go towards ignorance towards it all? So instead of uh, putting some emotion into it, just uh, not uh, associating it with it all together? And that's it. Well, I'm actually suggesting against that too, right? If I want to remain ignorant about how others harm others, then am I being loving? No. no. So what I'm saying is you want to be passionately emotional about all of these things, but realize that the changes begin inside of you without these things. So, so while I have a prejudicism of one race, one color, one gender, one whatever over the other, what am I doing? I am not acting in love. Can I add to that as well? Some of the other emotions that I think are within a lot of us are emotions about an unwillingness to forgive, um, a need to be right, and they are actually core issues within that issue that do contribute to that yeah, judgment. judgment. Yeah. And also, uh, I know quite a few people who watch The Secret and they don't watch the news anymore because that's just giving their attention to negative events. So, but I, I would ask the question, um, what emotion is within you that you cannot bear to see the injustice that does exist in our world because there is a lot of it? So let yourself feel the injustice that's happening in the world. I'm saying let yourself feel it. It will trigger some emotions in you. Let yourself feel that injustice and understand once you've felt those emotions, you'll get to the point where you can actually be loved in every one of those situations. But it is not loving to go and you know do things that are, that are protesting or boycotting or all of those other things. You can do it. You can do it as much as you want. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying that often it's driven by an emotion inside of you, not what's going on out there but actually inside of you. So a lot of times what we do is we feel the injustice of one party over the other. That connects with the injustice I feel about my own life, and I feel really passionate about that, not connecting to that emotionally, but I'm feeling passionate about it. And so I 
I'm like a leech in a way, connecting to this group of people or that group of people or that group of people, adding to their emotional condition, wanting an addiction satisfied within myself, when in reality what I need to do is release an emotion. So can everyone see the first issue with the first lesson there? I'm not saying don't be passionate about how others treat others. In fact, I'm saying quite the opposite. Be passionate about how other people treat other people. Right? But deal with it in the divine love way, which is look at myself, see myself, see what I'm creating here in this situation. Because all of us are creating something. Jen? Uh, last week I was talking to a lady friend of mine who was struggling with her mental health and she Yeah, but I would make the opposite suggestion to her. Go ahead, feel about it, cry about it, because there's a causal emotion in her that feels attracted to these people's loss. And she needs to feel that emotion. And so my suggestion is watch telly every day and connect to that emotion every day until it's done. And you can watch the telly and just feel love for them, but not feel this terrible sense of grief which is related to your own life, not to theirs. When I said to her, you know, stop watching it, and uh, and she just looked at me and said, oh, you horrible, unfeeling person. But now I understand, yes, I should have, um, I could have um, encouraged her to get into those feelings. Yeah, really encourage people to get into their feelings. That's the law of attraction operating in their life. Let them feel those feelings. So I feel really passionate about what's happening with the fires, but I know that it was created by soul condition. And in fact, the majority of the deaths were created by soul condition too. Because many of them had the soul condition that they were willing to put their property ahead of their life, right? Which creates in itself an attraction. So I know the true causes of what's going on with it. The key is for you to allow any single person who's triggered by these emotions, get them into the emotion. Let them go, go into the emotion, don't avoid the emotion. Don't step away from the emotion. And wouldn't you say once we're perfected in this lesson, we won't have judgment, but we will still care about how other people feel. Sorry. Yeah. So we can look upon many things and feel love for all of the parties involved, yeah. but we may actually be partial to certain parties if we feel that they are treating another unlovingly. We may, like, we won't become all zen about it and just go, oh well, it's you know, yeah. that's the way of the world. The, the truth is that you get to a point where where you can feel love for the person who's abusing the other person but not agree with the actions of the person who's abusing the other person. And in fact, do everything in your power to prevent those actions that is loving. Does that make sense? But still not condemn the person. And the problem today is we all often want to condemn the person. We want to punish the person. And in reality, the abuser needs just as much help, if not more, than the abused person. When I say help, I mean help to become love. The abused person is probably already in a loving space or with some more attraction issues, but the abuser is in a much less loving place and needs more help. So from God's perspective, an abuser would actually receive more help because he needs more help if he wants it. And that's the key thing, if he wants it. Right? Most often they don't, right? So of course they're not going to get it if they don't want it. So the key is to look at every situation. In the end, you'll be able to look at a person who's murdered and feel a feeling in your heart of compassion for them, but not agree with the action. But want to help them as well. And want to... Any of you seen that? Is it Dead Man? Dead Man Walking. Dead Man Walking? It's worth seeing. It's about that issue. And uh, it's, it's got a bit of a wicked ending, but it's a, uh, when I say wicked ending, it's not judgment, I just, I think it's a great ending. But um, 
it's it's just so good a way of presenting what we will become in the end in terms of inside of us emotionally. I'm a little unclear about this boycott thing because. In, in my life, if I if I don't if I don't agree with some uh, uh, something that's going on, and I have the ability to vote with my dollar, then I will I will vote use my dollar, my time, my energy to vote with something that I feel is lovely, rather yeah. than something that I feel is not lovely. Yeah, maybe I should clarify. When I when I'm talking about boycotting, I'm talking about active projection of anger towards. A particular issue. Okay. Now, most of us are not honest with ourselves with this. Like, it's one thing to actually step away from choosing to do something, quite another to have an active projection of anger towards that and boycott it for that reason. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the active projection of anger which actually creates more disharmony. Mm -hmm. Can I clarify about my boycotting issue? Because I, that I said the same thing to AJ. I, I've got rosary from two different places. I'm choosing the other place. Mm -hmm. And he pointed out that actually it's because of my emotion that's the damaging thing. I'm actively angry about you know, an issue. Yeah. So I was trying to get Mary back to the emotion of it. The emotion is that she is angry, and the anger is what actually creates more unloving situations, not less. So she's thinking she's doing an uh, actively loving thing by boycotting. In reality, her anger is the thing that's contributing to more unloving things. And in reality, I do go with my daughter a lot still. Like I, I feel I'm discerning about what I buy, the source of the things that I buy. But you won't be angry about it. Yeah. The clear inside, which is just... Yeah. So when I'm talking about all of these things, I'm talking about the emotion that's in you, what you're feeling towards it. Not necessarily the action, it's the emotion inside of you. So if you're boycotting because the emotion inside of you, I'm angry with that party and I support this party, then you're out of harmony with love. But if the emotion in you is, oh, there's an unloving thing that I've seen there and I want to do what I can to not support that unloving thing, well, that's a totally different thing. Right. But if you now go out campaigning, campaigning for that, you've got to then question, why am I campaigning for that when really, one of the better things I could be campaigning for is for people to change at the soul level. So why am I focused on the issue? Remember last week, a few weeks ago, the issue for you was this issue of vaccination. Mm -hmm. right. Now, it was the emotion in you of fear about a vaccination that drove your desire to find out about vaccination, that drove your desire then to tell everybody about vaccination and to, you know, and even not to sleep at night. Right. That was the emotion, right? Now, that the natural love way of handling it is that, of handling this care about how others feel about others, is handling it like that. But that doesn't help you any, and it doesn't help them either. The, the divine love way, right, I feel about the vaccination issue, oh, it goes back to my childhood when mum actually injected me with vaccinations, and I felt this pain about being treated badly through my mother and so forth, and being told that it was right, and, and that's what drove all of that other behaviour. Now, do you think if that had happened to you, if that hadn't happened to you, that you would have taken the same course with vaccination? I don't think so. And that's what I'm talking about. The core emotion, what's driving the decisions. Does that make sense? So I disagree with vaccination as much as you do, right? in the sense that I don't agree that it's a loving practice. Right? I also feel that it's quite a dangerous practice because there are often many chemicals in the vaccination, even like mercury and things like that, that are very damaging to the human body. But I don't have the same anger and panic and fear and all of those things which are actually creating the problem even further. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Through the law of attraction. Right. Yeah. Right, I'll proceed because uh, we need to. Um, 